Hello, it's Josie here. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a rope halter and Spider is going to be my model today. Spider was my attempt at breeding myself an up to height dressage pony. Dad was a 13-1, Mum was 15-2 and as you can see Spider is a very big boy. Okay, so we're going to show you how to tie a rope halter but first of all you need to make sure your rope halters fit in your horse. And I can tell you now, this one doesn't really fit Spider. It is too big. Okay, so I've got one here that will fit him, but I just wanted to show you one that doesn't. Why doesn't it fit him? Because these knots are up here in his eye and could actually do him some damage. Okay, and there's so much here underneath. It needs to be a little bit tighter and a little bit lower. I double my lead up like that and drape it over my arm, never through or around when it's attached to a horse because I actually know of a young girl who did that and the horse got a fright, took off and literally took her arm off at the elbow. Always got to be thinking about safety around your horses. They're big animals and they can do damage and not, not knowingly obviously, but they do. So I want it like this because you don't want it rope, um, the rope cooled around your foot and your foot stepping into the middle of the coil and then the same thing happening, okay? So the other thing you need to do, obviously, to get your horse to allow you to put a halter on him, it's okay if you've got little ones, you can just pop your arm over them and throw them, but these halters have long bits and if you have to flick it over, you run the risk of flicking it into your horse's eye. So your horse should put his head down for you. These are all training steps you should do before you actually attempt to halter your horse. So I can get his spider just to lower his head. I'm just putting a bit of pressure up here and he will just drop his head down for me because he's a good boy. So I'll get this halter off. It is dinner time. He might do a runner. All right, so I'll get this halter off. So he's, he needs to have his head down there because I'm little and he's big. And then you need to organize your halter so the little loop is on the side you're on and the long bit goes over it. So you pop this bit over his nose and not in his mouth like that but sometimes it goes that way if he were to put his head up I'd, uh, I've got my hand up here you can see it I'd ask him to drop his head down for me uh, sometimes I use my actual rope good boy so I can get that over hang on to it so this bit here this little knot here needs to sit up in the throat lash groove don't get it tangled in his beard and then it goes through and these are a tiny bit short for him. I had this custom made for him a few years ago and he's grown a bit since then. And so this needs to sit up here. Your two little knots should sit just underneath your cheek piece here and there should be enough room through here. This allows your horse to chew if it needs to. Now, if you can bring the camera in close up here, I'm going to show you the way I remember to tie this. The last thing you want is this flapping into your horse's eye and hitting him in the eye. And people tie these wrong a lot of the time. You don't tie on that knot, you tie onto the loop. So the way I remember it is, because this is just the way I work, excuse me spider creeping forward, it's tea time, just wait there is I don't I want it to go away from his eye so I have to go towards the eye under over that and then you just see that loop there you just go back through that and then you pull it and the reason we do them that way is that if the horse pulls this will get tight if he does a pullback this will get really really tight and almost be impossible to undo if you've tied it this way, what you do is you give this a wriggle and you give that a push and you can undo it. People who do them the incorrect way, which is to tie the rope up there on itself, will pull quite tight and you'll have buckleys of getting it undone and you will probably have to cut it off the horse. Okay, so let's do that once more. So let's come in close with the camera. So it comes from the inside to the outside, under, we make a circle around towards the eye because we want it to go away from the eye. That's how we do it, okay? So once more. Thanks, Spider. See, he thinks that you should do it that way too. So under there, under that loop towards the eye, and then under this loop away from the eye. And that is it done up. 
The other thing I'd like to tell you is never, ever, ever leave them on your horses in the paddocks. These halters don't break. Your horse will do itself an injury, okay? They don't break. Um, webbing halters will break, but even them, I don't think that you should leave them on your horse in the paddock either. If you can't catch your horse, that's telling you some training that you need to do, okay? So you should be able to walk up out in the paddock and catch your horse. Good boy. The other reason we want it up here and not down here, you, know, like you don't want your rope halter down there, that is actually a soft part of the horse's nose. That's cartilage and soft tissue in there. And you actually hurt them and it doesn't give you any uh, as much control as up here will. The other part of just while we're on this is if I pop my finger in his nose, he won't mind. You can see all the way up there is actually nostril flare. And horses use that bit to actually open their airways when they're working hard and get air. So nose bands that are on very low actually cut off half of the horse's anatomy that allows it to breathe and do the work it's meant to do. So that's another reason we need this one up nice and high. To me, this would be a perfect halter if this was a tiny bit longer because it is short that sometimes it's difficult to get it in there, but it's not too bad. We'll go down and get this one, the one that was too big, and I'll just pop it on over the top so you can see the difference. Uh, I'll just take the actual rope off. Hang on, we'll drop that because spider's a good boy. Okay, so let's watch me tie this one again. So it goes in through there. Get it up. See, this fits nicely up in the throat lash. Go, so it was under, and then it's under towards the eye to be done up away from the eye. But you can see this is way too high and can actually hit him in the eye. This bit, if they're too long, you can tuck them down in here or you can just sometimes do another half hitch just to stop them flopping around if they are a bit long. But you can see this is way too long. The reason I like to use a rope halter is because they give much more definition of pressure and a much more um, instant release to a horse. I sort of think a little bit like webbing halters, if I'm trying to train a horse with a webbing halter on, is a little bit like knitting with crowbars. It's absolutely terrible. You have very limited feel, and I don't believe that the horse gets the same amount of feel. So that's why I use them. And my horses, yes, go out to dressage competitions with their rope halters on. If you like, do you mind? If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you don't, hit the unlike button. We're all allowed to have an opinion. I'd love to hear in the comments though, whether you do or whether you don't. I'll also pop a link in the description under the video about three training principles, a small ebook that I've written. It's just a short ebook of three principles that I keep pretty much in the forefront of my mind whenever I'm working with a horse. So that's there for you if you'd like to download it and read it. <laughs> he wants his dinner.